a camera snapshot, send one to the folks back home. Oh, 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 not to my folks. You see, I'm supposed to be on a health farm. <laughs> okay. I hope you recover very soon. Are you doubling as a waiter now, Cookie? No, this is for your brother and Faye. Oh, is Steve back there with her? Yeah, in her room. How about taking my picture now? No one is looking. You'd better get back to the drink. Tell Steve to wait for me. Else, Faye? No, thanks, Cookie. Ellen wants you to wait for her. Okay, tell her I'll be here. Look here, Faye. We can't go on like this. There you go again. I've told you I'm being nice to him because he's my partner. Oh, partner. The biggest crook in town is your partner. Why don't you get out of this racket, Faye? Because I can't right now. But it's no good. It's bound to get you into trouble. Oh, that's the copper in you talking. Well, it always will be. Come in. Oh, excuse me. Well, what do you want, Nick? I'm looking for Nick. He isn't here. Yeah, I see he is. Great scotch and water chaser. I want to get that copper taste out of my mouth. I suppose that means Steve is here. With Faye? That copper gets in my hair. Every time I turn around, he's with Faye. Forget it. He's harmless. No copper's harmless. I said forget it. He's here because I want him here. Tom, this is one party wag crashing. It's the cops. They're breaking down the back door. I told you Shut that. Up. understand it. He, he must have lost his head. This is what he gets for hanging around a place like this. I'm holding you as a material witness. And I'm holding you, too. I don't mind going for the ride. My lawyer will be there soon enough. Taggart, one of these days I'll put you where a lawyer can't get at you. Might do the same for you someday. Take him downtown. Bring her along, too. Frank, you stay here. You got him into this. You can't get away with it. Why, Ellen, dear. Don't you dare me. If anything happens to my brother. Oh, Ellen, you must believe me. You must. I had nothing to do with it. I tried to keep him from shooting, but he was too strong for me. I don't believe a word of it.
fireworks at the Silver Slipper tonight, Jim. Two of the boys got in the way of some hot lead. 15th Precinct replacing Steve Bronson. Calling motorcycle 7171. Officer Rand. Rand reporting. Go ahead. Rand, this is Jim Murray speaking. What happened to Steve? He's been shot. Can't say how badly he's hurt, Jim. He's at the Fairview Hospital. Thanks. Pete, take over for me, will you? I'll be at the Fairview Hospital. Is this Steve Bronson's room? Yes. Are you a relative? No, I'm Jim Murray, his friend. Oh, yes. Mr. Bronson asked us to call you. How is he? He's conscious now, but his condition is critical. Try not to tire him. Go right in. Thank you, nurse. Jim, I'm afraid. Hey, now, take it easy, Ellen. Steve will be all right. We cops are tough. I'll believe it. Jim and me alone for a while. You better wait outside for me. All right. Call me if anything. Nothing will happen. Now, you run along. How do you feel, Steve? Oh, not too bad. Just punctured a little here and there, but the doctors patched me in pretty well. Steve, will you tell me the truth? What happened? Just one of those things. Remember, remember me telling you about a girl of the silver slipper, Faye Face on this. Well, I fell for her. That turned out to be the wrong setup for me. She double-crossed me. What do you mean? I didn't do the shooting. Faye did it. She grabbed my gun and shot it before I could get it away from her. When I did get the gun, it was too late. I was shot. Your father found me with the gun in my hand. Steve, did you tell this to my father? He wouldn't have believed me. I shouldn't have been at the club in the first place. You just can't let it go like this. I'll make him believe it. He'll have tough going, Jim. And Jim, there's something you must do right away. It's about your father. I don't know how you're going to manage it, but you've got to get him out of the department. Now, wait, Steve. Say that again. <laughs> I can't explain, Jim. There isn't enough time. But get him out before he's carried out feet first. But, Steve. You don't know the old man if you think you'll get out before he's forced to retire. He'll never quit. Well, that's all the more reason why he must get out. When he busted up Taggart's place, he, he signed his own death warrant. My dad's never been afraid of hoodlums. Steve, you don't know what you're asking me to do. Oh, yes, I do. I know what a stubborn old man he is and how proud he is. He's been good to me. And I want to go out feeling that I've done something for him. <coughs> no, 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 don't talk anymore, Steve. I'll call the nurse. And Jim, one thing more. Ellen, we'll be married soon, Steve. I'll take care of her. I know you will. You'd better go now, Mr. Murray. Jim, do me a favor, will you? On your way out, throw this in the ash can.
Steve. I'll send Ellen in. Jim, what did he say? Now, now, take it easy. Steve will be okay. Right now, he needs every bit of strength you can give him. Now, you go in there and keep that chin up. All right. Why, Jim, you must be out of your head to believe that rot. Or maybe Steve was out of his head when he told it to you. Steve was as sane as I am. But you can't think that I would ever quit. Not you, Jim. But, Dad, I believe Steve because, well, because he had no reason to lie to me. You've known for months that you've been on a spot that they threatened to kill you. Listen, son, and I want you to remember this always. I'll never quit. Never. No more than I'd expect a son of mine to quit. Doesn't go with a shade of our blood. So don't worry about me, sir. Hello, Jim. Strange this way, aren't you? Kind of. Here's the complete report on the Silver Slipper affair, sir. All right. Also, pay Sanders' sworn statement that Bronson did the shooting. That's all, John. You can leave them here for the time being. I can't explain, Jim. There is enough time. But. But get him off before he's carried out feet first. Why, what's on your mind, son? Dad, I want to be transferred here to the 15th. Why, Jim, you're doing a great job where you are now. But I want to be on active duty in your office. Pretty good outfit, son. But you're in line for promotion down at headquarters. Now, be sensible. Ah, but I want to be with the motorcycle squad. Where there's some activity, where there's something going on all the time. Not just cooped up in a room. Can't do much for you in this precinct, Jim. See, I can't show any favoritism. I'll take my chances. How about it, Dad? I don't know. I'll have to think it over. Yes? Oh, yes, Doctor. Yes. Yeah, all right, first thing in the morning. Yes. It's about Steve. He's gone. Saunders? Yes? I'd like to see you a moment. I'm very busy. Just a minute. What do you want? I have a message for you from Steve Bronson. Oh. Come in. Sit down, won't you? Steve asked me to return this to you, personally. Oh, why? It's his. I gave it he to him. He won't be needing it any longer. Oh, no, don't tell me. He... I'm afraid he is. Oh, that's terrible. He was such a swell guy, too. And to think because he just made one little mistake. I'm afraid he did, Miss Saunders. Just one. His name is a disgrace in the department forever. Not even his death makes any difference. And he was a swell cop, too. You were a friend of his, weren't you? Yeah. Cop too, aren't you? I was. Kicked out? No. I'm quitting. Quitting? I don't like the way they feel about Steve. Oh, Steve didn't mean to do it. Nobody in the department believes that. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Thanks for bringing me the watch, mister. I don't even know your name. Murray. Jim Murray. Captain Murray's son? That's right. But don't hold that against me. Your father was the one who started it all. He's the main reason I'm quitting. Oh. Well, I wouldn't be too hasty about that if I were you. You'll only be cutting off your own nose to spite the cops. Maybe. That's the way I feel about it. Well, it's been pleasant knowing you, Miss Saunders. My friends call me Faye. Am I a friend? Up to you.
You know, boss, I figure horses are smarter than people. Yeah, some people. No, all people. What's worrying that lame brain of yours now? Look, you put 10 horses in a race and 5,000 people will watch them run. Yeah, yeah. But if you put 5,000 people in a race, I'll bet you can't get 10 horses to watch them run. You and your cockeyed philosophy. Hey, boss, what did that cop want? Was it about the shooting? What cop? The cop was just here, so I'm going out. Are you seeing things? But he was a cop, I tell you. I got a flash of his badge. That's right. There was a cop here. Yeah. All right, boys, beat it. What about this cop? What did he want? A little social call. It's all this mystery about it. I'd like to know what's going on around here. Oh, darling, relax. I came in to tell you about it. Don't do that. Well, don't you like my new lipstick? Never mind about that. What about the cop? He's Captain Murray's son, and he's quitting the force. Don't give me that. Why should he come here to tell that to you? Oh, didn't he? He brought back a present that I'd given Steve a long time ago. Oh, it was nothing, Nick, nothing. Huh? You see, he's Steve's best friend. And he's burned up because the cops drummed Steve out of the regiment. That's not on the level. Now, look, Nick, give me credit for knowing my men. This one is on the level. What's more, we can use it. Think we can, huh? Well, sure. Same way we use Steve. Only Jim will be able to get us the dope straight from the feed box. So you call him Jim already? Well, why not? He's not going to be a stranger around here. Well, I don't like it. Now, look, Nick, we need somebody in the department. Jim will do it for us, I know. He hates his father. He's no good to us if he quits the force. I think I can get him to stay. Well, you know what I think? I think Murray sent him here to find out about that Bronson shooting. Mm -mm, not a chance. Jim told me the whole department thinks Steve did it, and Steve's dead. It's too bad you lost your head, Faye. Why did you do it? You know I'd do anything in the world for you. I wanted to protect you. Well, I didn't need that kind of protection. Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> you saw that cop start to draw his gun. I didn't see anything. I had my hands full. You say you had. I opened the door and saw you struggling with those cops and getting the worst of it. Well, I just grabbed Steve's gun and fired her. I didn't mean to kill the cop. I do wish you'd stay, darling. Jim will be home for lunch any minute now. I'd like to, but I promised I'd go down and see about my new job. Now, listen. Why don't you forget about getting a job and, and stay with us till you and Jim are married? Jim wants you here. No, Mother, I'd be too much bother. And anyway... Anyway what? You're not worried about the captain the way he feels about me? Well, no. Oh, don't be foolish, Ellen. Why, the captain's crazy about you. He already speaks of you as his daughter. Oh, but after what happened to my brother... Now, now, darling. You promise not to speak of that again. Oh, there's Jim. And the lunch isn't even ready. Mom. Hello, son. Jim, I wish you'd talk to Ellen. She's being very obstinate. Make her stay for lunch. All right, Mom. And I'm starving myself. <laughs> How about it? Ellen, I've got something important to tell you. I've just come from talking to Faye Saunders. Oh. Oh, I know what she is as well as you do, but right now she's important to us. How? Taggart has threatened to kill Dad. And Faye can help me prevent it. Why should she help you, a policeman? I've just convinced her that I'm fed up with the force. You see, what I've got to do is get in with that Taggart gang to find out who the higher-ups are, the men really behind him. I must stop those men before they get dead. Oh, Jim, they'll kill you like they killed Steve. No, Ellen. I'm going in with my eyes wide open. And it'll be a great chance to clear Steve's name, too. What do you want me to do? You continue on at the Silver Slipper, just as though nothing happened. We must work together. We've got a job to do, Ellen. Big job. Steve, be careful. Go well, right ahead, children. Don't let me stop you. It's all settled, Mother. Ellen is staying here. Oh, darling, I'm so happy.
People won't stand for the headlines like we had this morning. You know, I've always stood for a clean government in a safe city. I know, John. I know. One of my complaints about you, you've lost your punch. I need a man in your job who will keep the people happy. Frankly, John, I don't understand your policy. You're not consistent. First, you tell me to clamp down hard on a certain element. Then you tell me to ease up on them. My resignation is ready any time you appoint another man. I know, but Bob. And I'll tell you who that man is going to be. And why. Now, Bob, wait a minute. There's no need to get excited. I'm not excited. I'm relieved, John. But there will be considerable excitement when you've appointed this man I have in mind. Who do you mean? You know, John, the job of police commissioner in this town is a tough one. But I know a man who likes it that way. Captain Murray of the 15th Precinct. The public wants him, the press is boosting him, and you're going to appoint him, whether you like it or not. Murray will make you an excellent commissioner. He's a policeman, not a politician. Sorry, Commissioner. Uh, my fault. Oh, don't mention it, Taggart. You won't be getting in my way anymore. I thought I told you never to see me in this office. So you did, Mr. Mayor, so you did. But uh, after reading this morning's papers, I thought you might want to see me. Maybe, but not here. What's on your mind? Oh, a lot of things. That raid, for one. I didn't order it. Neither did the commissioner. Oh. So Murray is boss now, eh? Well, he thinks he is, and I don't like it a bit. Well, I'm glad we agree on that. Now, how about taking the padlock off my place? That's not going to be so easy. You'll need a lot of money with an election coming up. Yeah, that's so. And you know, you can always count on me. Uh, that is, if conditions are right. Sure, sure, sure. But that isn't what's worrying me. Commissioner Trent's resigning and... I guess I'll have to appoint Murray. Well, that just can't happen. Oh, for... What can I do? Murray is a hero in the headlines. He can be a corpse in the headlines, too. It isn't going to be so easy to get rid of him. No. I've got a couple of men who are very efficient in that line. Now, no rough stuff, Nick. But I'll leave it to you. Be seeing you, Mr. Mayor. I'm on my way to Captain Murray's office. Uh, shall I give me your best regards? What do you mean? Send for me for another chat, I guess. I'll be sure and come to my reopening, Mr. Mayor. Remember, Nick, don't try to see me here again. If we have to talk, I'll look you up. It'll be a pleasure, uh, John. I'm not going to waste much time with you, Taggart. Okay with me. I'm a pretty busy man myself. Yeah? Well, you're going to be a lot busier. Pack up and get out of town. Oh, no. I like it here. If you don't get out, I'll make it so hot for you that you'll be glad to leave. Now I'm giving you a fair warning, Taggart. I don't like you. And I've lost two of my best men in your dive, and I'll never forget it. Well, keep your cops out of my dive. From now on, any place you run is mine. Can't scare me, Captain. This is my town as much as it is yours, and I'm staying. Oh, you feel pretty sure of yourself, don't you? You bet I do. And what's more, I'm reopening tonight. Try and stop me. Who gave you the authority to do that? The License Bureau. Orders from higher up. The Commission will never stand for that. Your place is a cesspool, a public menace. And I'll close it up again and again. Captain, this fighting isn't getting us anywhere. We're a couple of grown men. We know what it's all about. Now, uh, why don't you be smart? Why don't you play ball with me? I go. All right, 
Captain? I guess you don't want to play ball with me. Get out. Well, this is a surprise. The Northwest Mountain. Just in time to get my woman. Want an escort? Not till you tell me where you've been. Oh, how bouncing around on my bicycle? The last time I saw you, you were gonna quit. I took your advice about cutting off my nose to spite the cops. I get something better lined up. I am quitting. Mighty handsome in that uniform. And if you weren't wearing it, I might take you with me. I'll take it off. There isn't time. The horses are practically at the post now. Oh, oh my favorite sport. I've got a hot tip, and I'm on my way to my favorite bookie. How about taking me along? Aren't you supposed to be on duty? Not when I play the horses. Okay, hop in. Wait till I park my bike. Well, young lady, don't you believe in the law? Let me see your license. What's the matter? You're parked in front of a hydrant. Look, big boy, I'm in a hurry. I didn't park this car alongside the hydrant. How do you think it got there, Walt? I don't know what the gag is, but two can play this game. Come on, come with me. motorcycle policeman attached to the 15th precinct for conduct unbecoming an officer on three counts to wit. Aiding an arrested person to escape, striking a fellow officer trying to do his duty, resisting arrest. You, James Murray, having been found guilty, are hereby dishonorably discharged from the police department. Said discharge to take effect immediately and irrevocably by order of the police commissioner. You've disgraced yourself. And I'm ashamed. 
ashamed of you. Now get out. All right, Murray. Beat it. Men fall out. Oh, Jim. Goodbye, Ma. Son. Well, Dad, you'd better get going. Someday, maybe you'll learn the meaning of the word loyalty. Maybe. Bye, Ellen. Oh, why did this have to happen? How can you eat that stuff with that good beer? You don't know what's good. But I don't think I like Mother Peach's cookies as good as I do Auntie Miller's patty cakes. Auntie Miller's patty cakes. Jim, come over to the table a minute. Jim, you're satisfied with what Nick's paying you, aren't you? Mm, yes, but frankly, I don't think I'm earning it. To be just as frank, neither does Nick. You see, we're sort of a cooperative outfit. Everybody's supposed to do his share. Oh, well, I'm ready to do my share. I've just been thinking of an idea, a big idea. One that's worth real money. Swell, now you're talking our language. Tell me about it. Fan and that cop are together all the time lately. So what? He's one of us, ain't he? Once a cop, always a cop. I don't know. Even cops reform sometimes. Suppose we talk it over with Nick. No, you wait a minute. I'll find him. You see, I'm still trying to sell you to Nick. If he likes your idea, you sell it. Can you take my picture now? Not now, Cookie. Later. Oh, Ellen, you ain't busy now. Want a picture, mister? Something for your memory book? Hello, Ellen. What's the matter? You afraid fail to you talking to me? You wouldn't be a little jealous, would you? Every time I see you, you're with her. Oh, now she's no competition, you know that. I didn't think so. I'm glad that's settled. How's Mom? She misses you, of course, but she's all right. And Dad? He's taking it pretty hard. He loves you, Jim. You're still his son regardless. Oh, I know how he feels, but what can I do? I've got to go through with this no matter how tough it is on everyone. I know. Oh, there you go again, afraid someone will see us. I wish this whole business were over with. Oh, I'm sorry, Ellen. It's nerves, I guess. Faye isn't talking to Taggart. Things will start happening. Well, I still don't see what's so funny. Well, it is funny. You worrying about an ex-cop who's worrying about you. Like a dog chasing his own tail. <laughs> well, you ought to know all about him. You've been pretty cozy with him lately. Why, Nick? You wouldn't be getting a little green around the eyes, would you? That bird's been hanging around here for a couple of weeks, and you told me he was going to be valuable. He is valuable. Suppose I tell you something you should have seen a long time ago. You can get Captain Murray once and for all through his son without sticking out your own neck. Well, now you're talking. Hey, Nick wants to see you. All right, Meg. All right, Jim. What's this big idea of yours that Faye was telling me about? My beat used to be the fur district. I know every street and alley in that district like the palm of my hand. Yeah. I know how to get into the storage lofts where the expensive furs are kept. Why, that district's crawling with cops. Anyhow, how would you get around the burglar lofts? Well, that's a cinch for me. I can disconnect them in five seconds. Well, if you can do that, you're a magician. What'd I tell you? Well, maybe. But I knew only one man who could disconnect those kind of wires, and right now he's doing ten years. I know every wire in those alarms, Nick. And so? 
Okay? Take Miggs and Cookie and do your stuff. And it better be good and plenty. Oh, Miggs. You do what Jim tells you. Well, we soon ought to know. You are the toughest guy to convince. Cookie. We got no boss. We're going out on a fur job tonight, and we'll need a truck. There's one up at the hideout. Well, let's go get it. Got a car? We can go up in my coupe. OK, let's go. You take Cookie in the car. I'll follow along on my motorcycle. Maybe I can dump it up there. OK. Wires run along the ceiling and round the back. I'll go and fix them. You wait here and look out for the watchman. Spooky around here. It ain't spooks I'm afraid of. Don't say that. <laughs> Sure, the alarm's off. Positive. I better find the watchman and take care of him. Now go ahead and do your stuff. Roger's first storage. Warn the watchman. Police department. Pick him up. brought the cops down on us. Why, if that stool pigeon double crossed me... Wait a minute. Me... What do you mean he brought the cops down on you? He tells us the wires are fixed. Next thing we know, the cops are there, and Jim ain't. But we got away clean. Well, where's Jim now? I don't know, but I'll bet you won't be seeing him. Come in. 
What's the idea of running out on me? You got a lot of nerve. Me run out on you? Just a minute. Suppose you tell us, Jim. I wanted to make sure about the watchman, so I went looking for him. And I heard the sirens down the street and took a run for it. When I got outside, the truck was gone. Okay. Let me handle this. Jim, did you take care of that burglar alarm? Certainly. Well, then what brought the cops? I don't know. Maybe the watchman heard us and called the cops. That's right, Nick. The watchman came pussyfooting in with a gun when Jim was looking for him. Well, that doesn't sound right to me. It don't to me either. But Nick, it was just a tough break, that's all. Why should I put myself on the spot? You know how I rate with the cops. You see, that makes sense, Nick. Well, maybe it wasn't your fault after all, Jim. All right, beat it. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Well, what do I owe the honor of this sudden visit? Nick, you've fallen down on me. My, 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 that's too bad, Mr. Mayor. Sit down. You promised to do something about Captain Murray. Oh, Murray. Yes, he's stronger than ever. All the blue noses and reformers are behind him. They're organizing all sorts of good government committees. That man will cost me the election. I told you I'd get him, and I will. I got a long score to settle with him. Well, then settle it before he settles us. Nick, this election's costing more money than we expected. That always happens, Mr. Mayor. So I'm prepared for the emergency. Oh, Alan. I hope you got enough there to buy a few votes. Can you get a picture of that? What's that? I guess an electric light bulb blew out. Here it is. I'll have it developed right away. Ellen, at last we've got just what we want. Hurry. Well, it's so long, Nick. I'll, I'll be seeing you. Bye, Miss Mayor. Take that roll of film, Ellen. Film? I, I don't know what you mean. What film? I know you shot a picture through that transom, and you can't fool me with this new roll. Where's that film? But I haven't got it. Hand it over, I said. I tell you, I haven't got it. Give you just one more chance. Where is that film? All right, I'll tell you. I gave it to Jim, and you can't do a thing about it. If you dare hurt me, you'll only make things worse for yourself. Why, I ought to. Cookie, take Helen into my office and keep her there. What did you do to make the boss sore? Cookie, if you knew what was good for you, you'd beat it. The heat's gonna be on for Nick and his whole gang. I couldn't do that. Nick would kill me. You must let me go. I've got to warn Jim. Honest, Ellen, you heard what Nick said. I can't let you go. Come on in the office. Where's Murray? You're uh, supposed to be watching him. Oh, I, I was just going to tell you, he's having his picture took. He's what? He's just into that picture joint across the street. Come on. 
How much longer will it take to develop? Oh, about 10 or 15 minutes. Make yourself comfortable. I'll make it as fast as I can. All right. All right. Hand over that film. Film? Listen, Murray, I'm not playing any more games with you. Ellen told me she gave you that film, so hand it over. All right. You win. I'll get back to the club. What's the matter, Cookie? Dick told me to watch Ellen. Watch Ellen? Why? Because I got the goods on him. She took some kind of a picture of Nick and the mayor. Why, you little stool pigeon. I knew we should have gotten rid of you a long time ago. If you get Nick into any trouble, you're going to answer to me. Now, give me that picture. I haven't got it. Now, look, Ellen. You can trust me. You give me the picture, and I'll see that nothing happens to you. I'll protect you from Nick. I'm afraid your protection won't do her any good. I was only trying to help, Nick. Yeah, well, you helped me for the last time. You were the one who brought Jim here. Told him it'd be a great help to us. Yeah, a great help to the cops. You've been making a fool out of me long enough. Bringing in the cops on me and getting me raided. Why, Nick, you're crazy. What's got into you? A little sense for a change. I know you've been trying to get rid of me. Trying to feather your own nest. Oh, Nick, you must be out of your head. Am I? Well, first it was that Bronson cop in that mess. From Faye, for always. Oh. You weren't kidding me a bit. And it was that cop Murray. I watched you with him. You brought him here to help get me. Nick, you don't know what you're saying. You know where you stand with me. Yeah? Well, I'll show you where you stand with me and where you have stood for a long time. I'll say you had. When I opened the door and saw you struggling with those cops and getting the worst of it, I grabbed Steve's gun and fired. I didn't mean to kill the cop. Steve took the gun away from me in time for the cops to see him holding it. Well, naturally, they thought he did the shooting. Then the cops struggling with you fired right at Steve and dropped him. Steve wasn't able to say a word. Even if he could talk, they wouldn't have believed him. Sure looked like he did the killing, all right. You know the rest, Nick. Just you and I. No one else. All the dirty, rotten tricks to pull on someone who loves you. I wouldn't have believed it possible. When I think of the things I've done for you, that's over now, Mr. Taggart. I hate you like I've never hated anything in my life. And if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to get even with you. I can pull a few tricks myself. A few you don't know about. Why, if I hadn't kept my mouth shut, you'd be serving a life sentence right now instead of the wrong guy. Yeah, I'm talking about the Martin murder. You forgot that I knew about that. Love, why, you don't even know the meaning of the word. Oh, I can see that now. The only thing you ever loved in life was yourself. Why didn't I tell him what happened to the gun when you double-crossed the O'Malley mob? Double-cross. Double-cross. Why, you double-crossed your own mother. I could have double-crossed you then, couldn't I? But I didn't. No, I had to come back and hang around here so you could make a record of what I say. Well, why don't you make a record of what I'm saying now? Yeah, what's happened to that state witness who was going to testify against you in the Gomez shooting, huh? I suppose I tipped off the cops about that. Oh, I could kill you in cold blood. But I won't have to, because I'm going to spill everything I know. Captain Murray will be very glad to find out who fired those shots through his window and how you plan to get him through his son. Boy, will you burn and will I be glad to see that. Why, when I get through with you, there won't be that much of you left to give orders to us as if we were dirt. Yeah, dirt! And then double cross us because we do what we're told. Yes, I can see that now. I'd have crawled on my hands and my knees for you if you'd asked me to. But you just try and make me crawl now, Mr. Packard. You've done it now. Murderer, you can't get away with it. Okay. Take her to the 
hide out and have Meeks take Murray there, too. Jim. Tell him, are you all right? Get back, Gabe. Wait. It's a touching scene, isn't it, Meeks? So you told me you hated your father and wanted to get even with him. Well, I don't believe it. As a matter of fact, I think you miss your old man. So I'm arranging a little reunion between you and your dad. Nice of me, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, you're gonna see your old man very soon. You're gonna drive a truckload of stolen goods, or at least they're supposed to be stolen. And your old man's gonna be tipped off about it. Why, you... Lock him up in a barn, Miggs. <coughs> oh, Haven't you done enough? Leave Jim alone. I told you to hold on to her. Captain Murray? Well, this is your old friend, Nick Taggart. I owe you a little favor for everything you've done for me, so listen. All right, go ahead. I hear you got a good chance of uh, being commissioner. Well, your son Jim will cinch it for you. He's driving a truckload of stolen silk, and he's taking the state road from Rockville, heading straight into town. At midnight, when he passes the Rockville Country Club, I've arranged to have him met by the riot squad from headquarters. I'm sure the newspapers will give it a big play. Taggart, I wouldn't believe you on your deathbed. No? Well, maybe you'll believe it when your son's on his deathbed. But it won't be a bed. for me, Captain? Oh, yes, Tom, yes. I've got a job on my hands, and it's very confidential. You see, my son has been framed into driving some stolen goods, and I've got to intercept him. Now, you meet me out front with my own car. I don't want this to look like official business. Yes, sir. Everything's okay, boss. Men ready? Yep. Cookie, you stay here with the girl. Come on. Makes untie his hands. Get in the front seat there, Mix. And you get in and drive. All right, boys, get in the back. to be along soon now. Maybe Taggart lied. I wish I could think so. Let's go, Copper, and keep on schedule. 
Come on, get going. There goes Jim. Oh, do something, Cookie. Warn Captain Murray. It's too late now, Ellen. Radio Central. Radio Central. Jim Murray calling. Listen, please. Important. Terribly important. Jim Murray calling. Radio Central. Jim Murray calling. Radio Central. Three miles west of Longbridge. Crossing on State Highway. Listen and keep listening, please. Because I can't have you cut back to me. This is life or death. Captain Murray's being lured into a trap to pick me up outside Rockville at approximately 12 o'clock to meet a truck full of killers led by Nick Taggart. They're using me as a decoy. Listen, I'll repeat again. I'm driving a white truck marked Dollar Van and Storage, loaded with dangerous killers. Emergency call, calling all cars, fast as possible. Overtake truck on State Highway, headed north from Rockville, filled with armed, dangerous men, gone now you don't have to keep me here any longer take me to jim we've got to help him all right i'll take you to the picnic i hope nick don't see me first oh cookie hi violence and all this is barry gray just before we hit the home stretch Close. Come on. I guess we're too late, Tom. The boys have picked him up. I hope he's all right. Get him off the road, boys. Lift him up. Careful. Well, that'll hold it. Well, there isn't much I can say to you, Jim, now that I've heard the whole story and know what you've done and what you've risked.
Thanks, Dad. You said you'd bake that gang up, and you did. Taggart's done for, and when Mayor Frawley reads that morning paper... He won't be there to read the paper. By that time, the police will have grabbed him. Oh, the hero's going to have his picture taken. Gosh, I got my picture taken. <laughs> 